What Phil's working on right now is, is actually fitting up all the rest of the tubes for the exhaust from the header back to the, the muffler. Uh, they're tacking it in place, and then once this is all set up, what we'll do is we'll take this off and go on the bench to actually weld the tube itself. And we'll talk about the process when we get to that point. Here we are at the next step in the exhaust building process. So uh, Dan, Phil, and the rest of the team finished up taking the, uh, the tubing out of the car. They tacked it in place. They removed it from the car. And we've got it over here on the bench. And before Dan finishes the, the welding of the, the tubing sections together, what we decided to do is back purge the tube. The reason why you would back purge stainless steel tubing is to prevent the, the sugaring that occurs on the backside. When stainless steel tubing is welded and exposed to ambient air, uh, it tends to uh, pull in uh, carbon in the air itself. And when it does that, it creates a compound called chromium carbide. It's very hard, but also very brittle. And more importantly, when it's exposed to corrosive environments like you'd see in an exhaust system, um, it, it pulls that chromium out of solution, so it, it reduces its amount of uh, corrosion resistance. So we want to prevent that in the tubing. So how we've gone about doing that is we've created uh, two dams on both ends of the tube just by cutting out cardboard, roughly the same shape as the uh, diameter of the tube, and taped them on both ends. We've inserted a uh, gas tube in one end, poked a hole in the other, and turned the gas flow of 100% argon up to roughly between 5 to 10 CFH, and let it sit until you've got full flow all the way through. And because argon gas is heavier than ambient air, eventually over time will push out or purge the ambient air out of the tube, creating a completely inert environment on the backside. So right now Dan's going to step in, he's going to start welding this tube up, and in a little bit we're going to show you the difference internally of what it looks like on the backside with a purge tube versus one that hasn't been. I just finished welding the 409 stainless tubing. It's about a 14 gauge thickness. I welded it at about 65 amps because that's just the right temperature where it begins to melt but doesn't blow holes. Especially if you have a little gap between the two pieces, what I like to do is um, pulse the, uh, the pedal so as you put the drop of uh, stainless rod and you let off it cools it down and then you can do the next drop and this keeps it from making a big hole or burning through once the metal is tight again I can just keep going pulsing and it, and it lets the metal melt into itself we back perched it to get a nice clean uh, inside weld and then get any of that crystallization it gets when you don't purge it. So just as an example to compare back purging to non-back purging, we took a couple of scrap pieces of that 409 stainless steel and just welded them up here on the bench. And you'll be able to see some of the sugaring that you get on the inside versus the back purge. On the inside of this unback purge tube, you can see that uh, crud that forms on the backside. That right there is where the chromium combined with uh, carbon dioxide in the ambient air and created chromium carbide, which is pretty brittle material, pretty hard, but also is corrosive. So for comparison, you can see on the back side of this tube, the, the weld is, is much smoother. Uh, you don't see that, uh, that sugaring that occurred. And from an exhaust setting, you don't have any of that that uh, potentially blocks the pulse of gas from the exhaust, which increases performance.